Hi everyone, I'm Christine Copper with Sotheby's Realty in Vancouver, BC. And today we're meeting with Jackie Zerb from Total Mortgage on the North Shore. She is a local mortgage broker. And we're talking about today's interest rate decrease by the Bank of Canada, what happened and who it's going to impact. So Jackie, can you give us the quick Coles notes on what happened this morning? Yes, fantastic. Thanks for having me, Christine. So great news, as was widely expected today, the Bank of Canada decreased their overnight lending rate. So we will see prime follow suit and drop by a quarter point. That's going to equate to about $15 per month for every $100,000 that you borrow. What is significant about today's rate drop is that this is the third rate drop this year. So 0.75% decrease in total for the year. That equates to about 200 bucks a month if you have a $500,000 mortgage. So that's a significant saving. So um, a lot of people that have a variable rate mortgage or a line of credit are really breathing a sigh of relief, starting to see that um, affect their pocketbook for sure. I think now variable rates are becoming more in focus. They're becoming more popular again because we've had 0.75% decrease in the prime interest rate. So they're becoming more attractive. But what's important to know is that even though they're becoming more attractive, a variable rate mortgage is only good for the client that's well qualified and that's risk tolerant. So there's going to be a lot of chatter in the news the next couple of days about, oh, prime rate decreased again, variable rates are on the way down. And there's going to be a lot of speculation for rates to come down further for the rest of the year. There's two more rate announcements coming this year. And economists are predicting that we'll see more decreases in the prime rate. But that's not the big story. The big story is still whether or not you're well qualified to get a variable rate and then whether you have the appetite for that risk because prime coming down, it's not going to be linear. It's going to trickle down and then it might pop up again and it might come down and then pop up again. So I think a lot of people are maybe not focused on that, whereas I think they should be. Mm, interesting. And how come that is? Well, I just think that you know, the media does such a good job of hyping up the fact that prime rates coming down. But what's important to think about is a big reason for prime coming down is inflation is starting to come into check. But what drives um, the Bank of Canada to decrease prime is those inflation numbers. And heading into the fall, we're going to see base effects where some numbers from last fall that were when inflation was starting to come down, those low inflation numbers are not going to have as big of a drive to inflation to come down this fall. So the summer we saw inflation come down quite nicely because last summer inflation was still quite high. And then last right. fall it started to come down, which is fantastic. And it's continued to come down. But now those big numbers from last year are going to fall out of the cycle. So that's what the Bank of Canada is going to be looking at coming into the fall and into the new year. So everybody's starting to jump on the bandwagon of, oh, let's go variable, let's go. But I wouldn't be so quick to just say, yes, variable is right for everybody right now. Does that make right. sense? Right. Okay. So it's the, yeah. So it's the base effect. So what you're saying is last fall, inflation finally started to come down. So when you're looking year over year, like, or maybe let's backtrack summer the inflation hadn't quite decreased as much, right? We had rate increases last summer still, right? Yeah. And so this summer, because inflation has gone down since then, when they compare year over year, it was still quite hard last high. Inflation was still high last summer. Now this summer, it looks better because inflation has decreased. But as we move forward into time in the fall, inflation started to come down already. And so when we compare last fall to this fall, the decrease won't maybe be as significant as we have seen recently to, to then support further, potentially further rate decreases. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Base effect. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So something to keep note of because nobody's talking about it yet, but I think you will start to see that chatter come the fall. So just right in the back of your head. Okay. So then what are you seeing right now as the difference between fixed rate like approximate fixed rate interest rates to variable interest rates currently? So right now for conventional mortgages, we're looking at a variable rate of about 
5.65%. That includes today's decrease in the prime interest rate versus a three-year fixed rate could be below 5%, around the 489, 499 mm -hmm. mark. So you're still a significant amount lower on the fixed rate than you are on the variable, but economists are expecting that we're going to see a couple more dips in the prime rate over the coming months. So this is where it's becoming really enticing to start considering a variable rate mortgage again. But you have to be well qualified and you have to have the risk tolerance to go there. That's for conventional mortgages. In terms of uh, insured mortgages, so if you've got less than 20% down payment, you're seeing uh, fixed rates in the mid fours, which is fantastic. And you're seeing prime or variable rate mortgages in about the five and a half percent range so about a one percent difference interesting so it's it's good if you're more of a high ratio buyer first time home buyer someone who doesn't have enough money to put down 20 percent, you actually get a better interest rate by almost a one point spread mm -hmm. so that's interesting for all those people out there because you know down payments tend to be the number one challenge for people outside of today's obviously the affordability challenge usually the down payments tend to be the challenge for people to get into the market and maybe not everybody knows about some of the programs that are out there that you can put less than 20 percent down and then you actually get a better interest rate which allows you to qualify for a larger mortgage which is like the second bonus of that and you pay down more principal every month exactly yeah lots yeah. of different okay. options for clients to consider so if you're struggling to come up with a down payment the good news is that you don't have to have 20 percent down lots of incentives for you to get into the market with the first home savings account the rsp home buyers plan gift from the bank of mom and dad mom and dad <laughs> um so lots of lots of opportunities there with that obviously with insured mortgages you get a lower interest rate but because you're putting down less than 20 percent your mortgage is insured against default by a mortgage insurer so you are paying a premium for that it's rolled into the mortgage so yes you get a lower rate but you pay a premium it's kind of six of one half a dozen of the other is it a wash basically sometimes um or is there no. still a little bit of a gap no because with insured mortgages the maximum amortization you're allowed is 25 years so your affordability you're still paying a higher mortgage payment than if you had 20% down because if you have 20% down you can amortize over 30 years so that basically just drags out how long you're going to carry that mortgage for but ultimately it, it lowers your monthly payment so it improves improves your cash flow so even though you're paying a higher interest rate on a conventional mortgage cash flow wise you're still ahead of the game but you have to come up with a 20% down in order to get there yeah but also on a 30 year am, I would argue that you don't get to, you don't get as much mortgage pay down, mm -hmm, um, like sure. your principal pay down. Right. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, there's, there's different variations exactly. and obviously excellent reasons to call your friendly local mortgage broker and learn more about all your options and how those numbers change. Coming back to the variable rate though, that spread that you had discussed, you know, saying that, um, on conventional, it was about five. 0.65 ish is mm -hmm. where the variable rates are and and the fixed terms are sub five around the 4.6 to 4.8 yeah i would that, say around 4.8 there 4.9 somewhere around there oh, 4.8 4.9 okay so still to get from where the variable rate is today to um to the fixed rate you basically need about three more 0.25 percent interest rate decreases to get to the same interest exactly. rate of uh, the yeah. fixed yeah and which and potentially could happen in the next year or even six months let's say if these base effects don't actually shift or or drag out the policy over the longer term which could happen so it depends on which camp you're in but that's basically what would need to happen is three more rates to get to today's rate but then you have to think about the rest of your term exactly right? so th three more rate decreases in prime for you to be sitting 
in a variable rate mortgage where you would be sitting had you chosen a three-year fixed rate term right now. So that's something to take into account. The other thing to take into account is that you have to be able to qualify for that variable rate mortgage. So let's say today you had a variable rate mortgage at 5.65%. You would have to demonstrate to lenders that you could carry that mortgage at 7.65%, 2% higher. That's the stress test rate, as opposed to qualifying for a three-year fixed rate at 4.9% you qualify at 6.9. So you can see, even though you might want the variable, you might not necessarily qualify. That's one thing to take into account. And then the other thing to take into account is, great, you choose the variable, but are you going to be okay if those three prime rate decreases don't come as quickly as you'd like? Or they might come down this month, and then next month, they might go up a quarter point or kind of go in a bit of a wave. So you have to be able to stomach that, which has always been the case with a variable rate mortgage. Um, you need to be able to comfortably go to sleep at night, not worrying about what the Bank of Canada is going to do at tomorrow's announcement. So that's definitely case by case and personal preference. And I wanted to ask you, what does it mean to be well qualified for a variable rate mortgage? But I think that uh, that was the answer right there. So that's excellent. Now, as we know, while the Bank of Canada interest rate announcements impact the prime rate, it doesn't necessarily impact everybody's mortgage payment. So perhaps you can just quickly explain, you know, whose mortgage payment this is going to change on the fixed and variable side and, and whose payment it won't change even if Absolutely. you're on the variable side. Absolutely. So if you have a variable rate mortgage, you either have a static variable rate or an adjustable variable rate. If your variable rate is static, then that means your payment won't actually change as prime increases or decreases. It just means that the amount of principal and interest you pay will change. So with a decrease in prime, more of your payment is going towards principal and less is going towards interest. So that means you're going to pay off your mortgage faster. If you have an adjustable rate variable mortgage, then your payment will fluctuate with prime. So as prime decreases, your payment will also decrease, which is good news for your pocketbook. Now, if you want to keep up with paying down your mortgage aggressively, as prime decreases, you might choose to actually keep paying the same amount. So that way you're paying off more principal. Um, so you'll be able to pay off that mortgage quickly. In terms of fixed rates, you're not going to see any changes in terms of your payment because fixed rates are completely separate than variable rates. Variable rates are funded off the money market and are directly related to prime, and whereas fixed rates are funded off the bond market. We have been seeing the bond market dropping in their yields, which has been decreasing fixed rates steadily for the last few months. So we have been seeing lower fixed rates, which is great news. Most likely today's announcement will continue to lower those bond yields, which is welcome news for anybody with a fixed rate mortgage. Awesome. Okay, excellent. And so we had a quarter point decrease, so 0.25% decrease. Third one, as you mentioned, and just thinking back, the last time we had increases were like rate increases were last summer. I think we had two quarter point increases. So yes. now we're actually getting back towards, you know, sometime to previous 2023 springtime ish market um, in terms of interest rates. So I've been actually one thing I've been hearing on the street is the banks are starting to have a little bit of a rate war trying to attract some business anticipating, you know, lowered interest rates. And I think maybe just maybe a little bit of a slowing in the mortgage market and trying to earn that business. Do you have any yeah, stories absolutely. you can share about that or insights? Absolutely. We've been seeing some of the big banks coming out with some really competitive rates and absolutely they're trying to regain market share. No um, surprise that the housing market has been quite slow for the last few months because of these high interest rates. So now that we're starting to see those lower interest rates, there's competition heating up, which is welcome for everybody. Everybody could use a lower rate, right? So definitely totally. some, some excitement in the market. Yeah, actually, this is really interesting because I think um, we had discussed where rates are today. And you were suggesting that uh, some conventional rates are sitting around that 4.8, 4.9 rate for like a fixed, more a three-year fixed mortgage, I think you were sharing. And if I recall, one of the last times we had a bigger boom in the market was last spring. So the spring of 2023, there was actually quite a, there's still quite a bit of demand in the market compared to the amount of listings we had at the time. And, you know, one thing that I remember is, you know, rates under 5% were actually common 
back then, which was quite appetizing because obviously we had had some much higher numbers. So we'll see maybe in the spring, depending on the amount of inventory, um, obviously excess supply, it, it may not like start pushing up prices, but maybe keeping these prices where they are um, could be a real, real thing. So interesting times. I think what's interesting is now that we're starting to see these rates come down, we're going to see um, activity pick up in the housing market. And it's a bit of a double-edged sword because as rates come down, buyers qualify for more money, which then in turn drives up the price. The biggest um, contributor to inflation is still shelter. So as these rates drop, prices go up, and then that inflation bucket is still propped up by that shelter cost. So it's a fine balance that we're dealing with over here. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Very good point. And it might not even be that prices get pushed up. It's just more people entering the market with more debt. And then the debt at these higher numbers then shows shelter is still elevated and there's a lot of shelter costs. And then that could potentially sustain maybe the higher for longer, which we've obviously seen, but maybe things won't come down as quickly as some folks are thinking or may anticipate, which then leads me to, you know, seeing a couple of news articles that some economists are suggesting with the way things are going in the economy, we might actually see some bigger rate decreases, like perhaps even a 50 basis point increase. What do you think it would take to see, forget the housing market, how about in the economy to see that kind of uh, rate yeah, increase. I think I think a 50 basis point drop is not off the table. It's absolutely something to consider. Um, I think the Bank of Canada has been very progressive in lowering their interest rates compared to the states, which hasn't happened yet. I think you're going to see that 50 basis point drop in the states relatively soon. Um, I do think Canada is quite conservative. So there's two more inflation meetings that are happening or inflation announcements that are happening before the next Bank of Canada announcement. So we'll see how those unfold and that will dictate how deep of a cut we'll get at the October meeting, uh, whether it'll be a quarter or 50 basis points. Um, so it remains to be seen. Everything's still a little bit up in the air. I'm a glass half full kind of person, so I'd like to see more drops as we all would, but I wouldn't be uh, too sure just quite yet. It's a little bit too soon to tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would also anticipate that if we're going to have a 50 basis point decrease, perhaps like things are actually not looking good in the economy, which could then also not be great for our bar, like existing borrowers or potential exactly. future buyers in the marketplace. Exactly. Um, quick question for you with, with the trend of interest rates starting to decrease, are you starting to like anecdotally see more calls, see more people, you know, reaching out and thinking about getting back into the market? Because there's a lot of talk about home buyers sitting on the sidelines mm -hmm. compared to historic activity. One would assume they don't have all just disappeared and forgotten about real estate. Perhaps they're just sitting on the sidelines waiting to get into the market at the right time for them. Um, mm -hmm. Curious if you're seeing an uptake in the last little while. I have been interested. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's more buyers coming out of the woodwork. Usually summertime is a slower time for me, but I've had so many calls with new buyers that have been sitting on the sidelines. They've been diligently saving their down payments. They've been watching the market and now they're ready to pounce. So I think we're going to see a lot of activity this fall for sure. Oh, very interesting. Okay, cool. That's great to know. Um, and for those people that are already in the market, you know, maybe feeling the pinch, uh, any options out there for them in terms of like still sitting at these higher interest rates and maybe, you know, not uh, not working out well for them or maybe just looking for some changes to take some of the pressure off until, you know, the next few years and for hopefully interest rates stabilize lower from here. <laughs> Absolutely. It's always a good idea to reach out to a mortgage broker to run a complimentary analysis of your numbers. I just refinanced a couple who own two properties. They're a principal residence and a rental property. Both of those mortgages were in variable rates that didn't have a very big discount beneath prime. And they were carrying some debt that they couldn't get rid of. They were really struggling to make ends meet because of these high interest rates with prime being so high. And 
thankfully we were able to refinance them, consolidate their debt, secure much lower interest rates than what they had. And so their cash flow is astronomically better. So if you're not sure where you're sitting or what your options are, absolutely reach out to a mortgage broker. It doesn't cost you any money. It takes a few minutes of our time so that we can crunch the numbers for you. It's good to just do a little health checkup, just to check in, see where you're at. And then at least you know what your options are moving forward. Awesome. All right. So I guess lastly, when is the next interest rate announcement? The next interest rate announcement is on October 23rd. So as I mentioned before, we've got two inflation data releases prior to that. So that will heavily impact the Bank of Canada's decision. And hopefully those inflation numbers are good, which will potentially lead to a 50 point basis decrease. Now that basis decrease, that 50 point decrease though, would that, um, you know, and then considering the base effect between now and last year, do you think that they'd, I mean, like inflation would really have to be in check for that to happen, you think, or like, yeah, jobs? I think, I think we're not going to see the base effect phenomenon until the fall when those numbers um, really kick in. I think the September and October inflation numbers will bode well because last year's were still quite high I think heading into October November December that's where we're going to run into base effect issues so perhaps the Bank of Canada is more aggressive where they might reduce by 50 basis points in October and then they might sit tight for December um, but again nobody holds a crystal ball so at this point it's yeah. just speculation today we're just focused on the fact that we got a quarter point decrease so we're rejoicing Yay. I like that win. If you have like some tangible numbers you want to throw in there, like, yeah. oh, we went from a approximate. Oh, that one, that one, we saved the clients $2,900 a month. We improved their cash flow by $2,900 a month and we eliminated $35,000 of debt. So, wow. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think took them so long to reach out? Like why, you know, and, and what is it like, what things kind of fell together for that to work for them? Cause that's a, that's a huge impact on it's on a huge it's a huge impact I think a big flow. thing a big thing for that family was that they were in variable rate mortgages and so they were just holding on waiting for prime to decrease which it has started to decrease now but it's not decreasing fast enough for them to be able to maintain their payments and their quality of life so in this case we actually switched to fixed rate mortgages but we saved them a significant amount of money because the fixed rates were so much lower than their variable rates. Um, and in the process, by consolidating high interest credit card debt, we really improved their cash flow. So sometimes people are too scared to reach out for help and they don't know how to ask for help. So I think there's a lot of pride involved and mm -hmm. all it takes is a phone call. It doesn't cost you anything. Okay. No pressure. And we might do a health check and you might be fine. You might just have right. to sit down for three more months, but in some cases, families can't afford to sit tight. That's where the well-qualified and risk tolerance piece comes in. You might've been well-qualified um, two years ago Before. when Prime was at its lowest, and maybe you would haven't experienced the risk tolerance until post-pandemic where Prime shot through the roof, right? So public service announcement, really, if, you, if you're sitting out there and you're, you're struggling to get through this period of time, there could potentially be options for you. So please reach out to who, whoever your professional is. Jackie's here is welcome to take a call. Or if you have an existing relationship, um, reach out to those people and see if somebody can help you. It doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't options that are available that, you know, that's great. You've reduced your debt service. That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm looking forward to doing this again. And if there's any other interesting announcements, hopefully we can uh, do this again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your time. Thank you.